Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Denise, and uh, I will be taking you through the basics of DigiMap for schools today. And uh, so today's we, webinar will give you an overview of uh, the mapping tools available to you on DigiMap for schools. But we also offer the DigiBytes, which are smaller, more um, detailed webinars that focus on different uh, areas of DigiMap for schools. Uh, for example, if you want to le learn more about drawing tools, you will join the webinar, uh, the DigiBytes webinar for drawing tools. If you want to know about uh, layers, you, there is one for layers, one for adding your own data. So make sure to check those webinars and uh, the past webinars are av available on YouTube and the webinars who uh, are going to come soon, they are on our website. I will show you at the end, but yeah, make sure to sign in and uh, take advantage of this free service. So when you uh, first uh, join uh, Digimap for Schools, you, your whole school receives a, a PIN code and a password. So the password is uh, what you use for log uh, to log in, and the PIN code is what you use to change settings and uh, uh, arrange your preferences on Digimap for Schools. We'll talk a little more about the PIN code later on and the passwords. So, when you first open your DigiMap for Schools, that's what you see. This is the main mapping area of DigiMap for Schools. So you can zoom in and out by using the scrolling uh, zoom on your mouse, or you can use the bar on the right uh, of the, your screen and either drag the the bar up and down, or you can use the minus and plus. And uh, if you find that you zoomed in too much, you got lost, don't know where you are, this box underneath with the arrows pointing in four directions. If you click on that, you go back to the original map and uh, the original screen where you started from. So. Before we go ahead, let me zoom in and concentrate a little on the UK. And uh, here you can see I'm using the scrolling button. If you have a touch screen, you can also use the, the uh, pinch your screen up and down, and that will take you uh, to zoom in or out on your screen. Okay, since I'm already zooming in, in a lot here. Let's go to a place here called the Holy Island, which is on the north of England. So, and I will show a very interesting icon, uh, oh, sorry, a very interesting function, a set of tools that you can use with uh, younger students, for example. So on the left uh, panel, you have, uh, different tools that you can use with Digimap for Schools. And you will have also some of the tools on the top bar, and we are going through each one of them. So let me start with the key tool. And the key tool, as you zoom in, is going to show me different symbols in a map. So if I buy a map on the gas station, for example, it will show me some keys. And those keys are exactly the same keys we have with the GMAP for schools. And uh, that is a good way of uh, working with your students, comparing maps and uh, showing them what is available and uh, what each of the symbols in a map, each of the keys will mean. For example, if I go here and uh, look at the water features, I will have a set of features that I can find in my map. And if I go to the land features, I will see that, for example, I have a wind turbine and uh, it is right here. I have a mast and for electricity, which is here. And uh, I have also a lighthouse, which is down here. And if I change then and go to, let's say, tourist information, 
I will have another set of symbols and uh, I will have a castle and I will have a garden and a museum and uh, you can scroll down in the nature reserve to show this little bird here. So there are lots of things you can do and uh, lots of uh, activities you can work with your students. For example, if I'm concentrating on the wind turbine, I can study the distribution of wind turbines across the uh, a region in the UK, for example, or I can also use the uh, windmills and study the concentration of uh, windmills and uh, just really play around and uh, use the keys to what best suits your uh, studies with your students. So I use them out of here a little. And uh, while I can find places, if I know where they are, zooming in and out, I can also use search. And I don't know if you noticed as I was zooming out, my key changed as well. And it changed because it, Instead of uh, showing specific points in more details it is go and, and symbols, it is going to start showing me what I can see in the map, what the map would tell me, uh, like I can see red, uh, pink lines, blue lines, green lines, and of course, those are roads, those are motorways and the uh, junctions, and you can uh, analyze those with your students as well. So there is a lot to play and a lot to investigate with the keys. But let's say I I don't know where the place I'm looking for is. I can go to the search and I can either click on the magnifying glass here or I can uh, tap and uh, type if I have a touch screen or I can just click with my mouse and then look for a place. So let's say I'm searching for, for Aberdeen. So Aberdeen, and then I press enter. And I will have two different results, uh, two different sets of results. Aberdeen uh, in Scotland, and I have world places or places in the world and uh, which will bring me also everything that is called Aberdeen in the world that the map could identify. So the first Aberdeen I have here is the one in Scotland, the same one that I can press from here. So, but let's press from the world map. And it will bring me straight to Aberdeen. So I can zoom in. A pointer will appear on the, in the place that I'm looking for. And if you don't want that pointer there, as soon as you click on the X button here, the pointer will disappear. I like to keep the pointer while I'm zooming in because uh, that uh, helps me, guides me and uh, to, the, to the correct place. As you can see, uh, the maps in the UK, they are very detailed, very uh, reach in all that you can see, you know where the roads are, you know what the houses are, and uh, you can even identify, if you uh, go to the key, you can identify from the color of those uh, marks here, which uh, type of building it is. If it's a, a building with a glass roof, the key will let you know as well. Let's see, if I go, for example, to, uh, Aberdeen in Mississippi, USA. You can see that the map here of Aberdeen in USA is already not so rich in details. So depending on where you are looking for uh, the places in the world, some maps have more details. Some, some countries will give more details to their maps and uh, others will not have so many details. So I can see the streets, but I cannot necessarily see the houses. And if I go to Canada, I will have even less details. So I'm just in a map lost in the middle of a big empty area. Of course, the area should probably is not empty, but the information that we are given in the map is not uh, 
much. And then if I decide to go to Aberdeen in Hong Kong, China, and then I will find the city of Aberdeen, you'll find that the Chinese map is also has more details, although there are clusters of houses rather than individual houses in some in some places. And uh, you'll find that the names are also written in Chinese. The, there is some translations, but not always you'll find the translations. So you have to bear in mind that depending on where you want to find a place in the world, it is going to have a, a translation or it's not going to have a translation. And uh, you can use the search button to search for uh, cities, towns, uh, touristic points. So if I go to the Taj Mahal, it will take me to the Taj Mahal in India. And uh, yes, it can guide me to uh, historic uh, points, uh, uh, places, and touristic places. So big landmarks as well. Okay, uh, the next thing we are going to talk about, and we are going, as we are going through the icons and the tools on the left, is we are going to look at the measuring tools. So the measuring tools, they are quite good, okay. I am somewhere in India and I don't want to be in India. So let it's a good time for me to show you here on the top, these uh, two arrows that go around. If I click on that, I will also go back to my original map. And then it, I will have to uh, zoom out or in again as I want. So, and the, let's search, for example, to for Newton Grange Primary School, okay? And that is a good one because I only have one, this one is wrong. So I only have one Newton Grange Primary School in the world and that one is in Midlothian. So I will leave the pointed there while I'm zooming in so I don't get lost because as you can see it moves a little and now I can get rid of it. So I have a uh, Newton Grange Primary School and uh, I can measure. So I will use my measuring tool and I will measure the, I can measure the distance. So let's say I, I'm going from the hall to the main entrance of the building in the school. If I click and leave and click and leave, I click again at the end and I have, so 200 meters, 205 meters. And I have also the measurements in yard. If I want to measure in area, for example, I can just click, drag, click, click, click and click at the end, and I know the measurement in the square meters as well. The only issue with measurements is that it is something that you can do with your students on the spot. They can use it for uh, calculating uh, different measurements. They, have, they can have as many measurements on the screen as they want. So let's say, uh, the distance, uh, compare the distance between Johnny House and the school and the distance between Peter's house and the school. And uh, you can uh, let them play around and uh, do some calculations with the measurements. However, at the moment I leave this map, all the measurements will disappear. I can't print them. I can't do anything with them. And uh, what I'm going to do then is I'm going to delete them all. I just click on deleted measurements, delete all. And then I can go to the drawing tools. And then you have a measurement uh, area in the drawing tools, which will behave exactly in the same way, but this time it will be saved. And this time I will be able to uh, print or download my, my map with all the measurements and all the drawings. So let's take a look uh, at the drawing tools. So the first tool that I have here is the marker. 
and uh, the markers are quite popular with young children because there are the, the all the icons they can choose. They can also change the colors of their icons. So let's say, for example, I want a tree and uh, I want my tree to be, to have a bright green line and a dark green fill. I don't want the fill to be solid. I want it to be uh, transparent. So that's how I make uh, it transparent or not. So I get it completely transparent or just slightly visible. And at the moment I touch and click on my map, the tree that I designed is going to appear there in the colors that I chose. And as many times as I click, I will have a tree. So if you are asking the students to design a playground, for example, they can add trees, they can add children playing, they love the stick man, and they can uh, also go around the school and map the area and say like, uh, how do you like this play area? So it is a happy play area, or is it uh, a, a play area that needs uh, some improvement? So you can do also lots of uh, ex uh, interesting studies with your students on with the, the markers. The second one is the shape. And for the shape, you can you can draw polygons, you can draw freehand. I won't even attempt that because I'm terrible at freehand drawing. You can make a triangle, a square, rectangle, pentagon, circle, oval, and the uh, I think the most popular one is the polygon because with that one you can make uh, you can shape any building or can shape around any building, and this is the process is the same as in the measurements. Click, move on, click, move on, and as you click on the place, uh, you will be designing your polygon, and. I'm going just to go around the school building, the main building here. I will ignore everything else. And we'll go here and click at the end. Now I have my polygon. And if I don't like the color and I forgot to change that be beforehand as I did with the marker, I can always change it afterwards. So all I need to do is to select. So I will click on select the, the building. And then I can click on the color and change to the color I want. So I want it blue. I, it is the line, so it's OK if it's not transparent. But for the fills, I want also blue. And this time, yeah, halfway, not completely transparent, but transparent enough that I can see the building underneath it. Because if I make it solid, I can see the building underneath. And then when I click outside, this is the polygon as I wanted it to be. I can do the line in the same way. So I want this time a red line and my line is going to be a dotted line, and it is going to be slightly thicker at four points line. And I want it again from the church hall and all the way to the entrance of my building. Click again. And now what do I do with these drawings? I can measure them. I can actually ask my students to measure those drawings and to, to calculate. So let's say if each of the students will add the, the distance between the house and the school, they can calculate who's got the shortest, who's go, got the longer distance. And uh, for example, I would just click on measure and then I click on the building and I have my measurement in the square meters. And I could actually have chosen imperial uh, unit. So if I go again here and uh, click on measure, 
and I click on my line. Measure, I can choose. This time I'm going to choose Imperial measurement and as I click on the line, it will appear there. So in yards. So those are some of the tools you can use with the drawing tools. You can also add a text. And uh, for example, if I want to um, add a label, Newton Grange primary, and that is where it's going to be. The little hand that appears when I hover over the, the, the name, or the label, I if I move my little hand, I will move the label to wherever I want. So let's say this is the title of my page and that's when I would use uh, the text. If I just want a label, I can, when I modify the, the, uh, the drawing, I can add a label as well. And I can also add a text box. So a student can add a text box to make an explanation of what it is. So I can add a text here. So I'm design a play park. Okay. So the teacher can leave this as a note for the students or the students can uh, add use that to explain what they've been doing and what they would like and to, to enhance their discussions as well. So it's entirely up to you, but it is a good way of uh, making notes on, on your work as well. And you can add images to your uh, drawing as well. So if I add an image and I want to add an image here, I will just click on image, click on where I want the image to go and choose from a file that I have on my computer already. So I have a, a picture of Newton Grange uh, Primary School. I will just click on that, open and upload. And my image will appear here. When the little hand is all over it, I can change and uh, drag around and put it where I want it to be. I can also use the... Uh, grid reference and uh, get the grid reference on my drawings and I can use the buffer tool. The buffer tool, I think it's a very powerful tool for uh, elder students because it is going to um, help them to, to analyze, for example, uh, the structures and uh, identify, uh, for example, Let's say I'm doing a buffer tool and I want a point buffer tool. So at the moment I click on the, so I want a point, I will have to add here. So I want a half a kilometer, half a kilometer. Uh, I won't bother changing the colors now. I, I'm fine with as they are. And we are going to discuss on how to, uh, where we want, uh, let's say a football field to be. So when I click here, I have a buffer tool that is half a kilometer in, in every way from the center from where I clicked. I can also uh, delete, uh, delete the buffer point that I've just made. And let's try again. And uh, this time I'm going to get a line buffer uh, tool. And I want it 200 meters uh, from the train line. So let's say I want to know um, if the, uh, the noise uh, pollution from when a train passes by would affect the school in any way. So if I'm I'm to understand where to build a school. And I understand that, uh, let's say in that region, uh, the, the, the noise from the train would travel 300 meters. When at the moment I create my buffer too, I will know that in this line from 
that is closer to the school, my buffer to oh, my noise pollution will be fine. I, it won't affect the school in any way. And you can use that also for rivers, like if you want to, if you know uh, the flooding, like I'm not supposed to build a house uh, 100 meters from that river because that river has a, a flooding extension of 100 meters. So it is a good uh, tool, uh, the buffer tool is a good tool for you to, to work with your students and to identify. So again, what do I do with all this? So once you play around and once you 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 work on your drawings and you go around and do as many uh, activities and drawings and uh, that you want, you can also save your drawings. And for saving them, you can press on Save Map and you can save them here. So I have one saved. So everything that is saved will be collected here. So I have one uh, Newton Grange uh, Primary School saved. And uh, it when I press save, uh, it, it because I have it saved and the, I'm opening the one that was saved already, it is going to ask me either to replace or merge drawings. I can merge drawings so I can have drawings from different uh, activities. So let's say each of the students will do one part of the activity. I can merge all the drawings and, and uh, print it as one big activity. To save my maps, I will just click on Save Map here. And uh, I will be asked to add a title. Uh, you can add the class name, that's optional. You can add the pupil name. The only thing you need to bear in mind is if you add your student's name or in, if you add sensitive information like uh, the child's address and the distance to school and the, or they, the way they go to school and so on, you have to uh, be aware that everyone who has the password will be able to, to, to see those sensitive informations. In the same way that I was able to see all that my colleagues have saved here, your students will be able to see each other's uh, saved work and uh, everyone else with a password. So uh, giving a password to, to parents, for example, uh, we will allow them to help students, but we will also allow them to see information about other students if they are sensitive information. So there are two ways we can go around that. Uh, one is uh, if you go to the arrow here and you can go to the settings and from the settings, you will be prompted to add your PIN number. And with your PIN number, you can actually disable the saving. So your students wouldn't be uh, saving and uh, able to save. So that information that is uh, sensitive information wouldn't be uh, seen by others. That's one way. And the other way is uh, you can work around and give students fictitious names like working groups and give, uh, add there the group names and give uh, characters like fairy tale characters. So you, you can imagine a, a way around that would not necessarily expose sensitive information. And, uh, but yeah, it is uh, one way that you can work around. And uh, one thing that we recommend is why you, it's okay to give the password to parents, uh, ask the parents not to you uh, give it to someone else because it's on, uh, Digimap for schools is only meant to use for educational purpose. The PIN number is a different story. The PIN number should not be given to, school, uh, to students and parents. It is something that should be only between the teachers and uh, whoever is uh, responsible for the, the settings of the Digimap for schools in your school, because if you have the PIN number, you are able to change the settings. And uh, imagine if a student changed the settings from able to save to 
disabled saving and no one would be able to save anything and also your preferences and everything will be tied to your pin number so bear in mind that the pin number is restricted because it can change the settings of your digimap for schools and uh, so that's uh, going back to the drawing tools i can uh, delete the tools if i don't want them anymore so i can either delete on click or delete selected to delete selected i will click on select select here my buffer tool and then delete selected the buffer tool will be gone and if i want to delete in a different way i can delete on click i press on delete on click and i will just click on my line and that will be gone if i i can also just decide that I don't want any of that and I can delete all my drawings. If you don't want to, you, you are in a hurry and you don't want to be playing around, you just click those arrows again, everything goes back to where they were before. So that is the drawing tools. And now I showed you the saving as well. Let's see the map selectors. So I, have different maps and it depends on how zoomed in or out my map is and I can select. So this is now gray. That means I can select a map, but as I zoom in, it is going to change into green. And if it, once it becomes green, yeah, I can change different maps. Um, so I have here a uh, aerial view and I can change, I have two different historical maps as well. So let's say, uh, let's do something else. Let's go to Darrington. And uh, I quite like to work with Darrington for the map selector. And I want Darrington in wheelchair. So. Darrington is nowadays quite a big town. And let's see how it was in 1890s. So I have it uh, ticked here. So I can either tick here where my dot on the top is and it will change the map, or I can leave it as it was, let's say ordnance survey and the 1890s, and I can just drag this dot here and it will you move and transition between maps. So that is how Darrington was in um, 1890s. And I will zoom out a little so that you see there was absolutely nothing here. It was a little uh, parish village, which is here. And right above uh, Darrington, there is a place called Millstone. And Millstone is this place here with those three houses. In 1950s, Millstone is still the same place with the three houses. And Darrington is still quite small. And that is, I'm talking about 1950s already. So, but you can see that some, some things started growing around Darrington. And uh, when it gets to, and I'm moving here again, and you can see that it changed a lot. And as you can see now, Darrington is quite big and quite quick. So you can actually use the uh, map selector to study the growth of towns and cities. You might know a city nearby or in the UK that uh, grew too fast in, in a short period of time. I think uh, Milton Keynes is a, a good example of that. And uh, you can study the reasons for that and the infrastructure. Is the city coping? Actually, Darrington is not coping and they have uh, infrastructure issues because of the, the speed of growth that they had 
and it is all due to these uh, barracks here. They are military barracks that uh, were built after the uh, during and after the Second World War, and that is what caused uh, uh, um, sudden growth in this town of uh, Darrington. But Milston is still here, and it is still a uh, a place with those three little houses. And if you go to the aerial image, you will find out that actually the reason for that is that it is a farm. So that's why it never uh, became a big town because it's been a farm since the 1890s while Darrington uh, grew a lot in, in that time. And here are the barracks. So that is the map selector, and you can use for uh, doing uh, historical analysis, analysis and see, uh, seeing how places changed from time to time. And uh, now let's talk about the geograph. You can uh, let me see if I am in Darrington. I can look for an image. So I will just go here to image search. And uh, if I click on, let's say, just the little stars, it will bring me everything, every single picture, every single image that is in that map. But I don't want that. I just want a church. And it will bring me every church and everything that is a reference to a church. So basically I have some church here at the bottom of my page, but Darrington seems to have only one uh, church, which is this one here. The number three means there are three pictures. I can either click on the tree or I can click on the pictures here and it will show me. Okay. And uh, the only thing is, uh, um, the images in the photograph, they are added by people and uh, although they are secure and scrutinized, so uh, they are safe for your students to use. Sometimes you need to be creative about uh, how you call the, the uh, what title you give, how you search. Like uh, sometimes you look for church and you won't find then try again, try with the uh, places of worship or try uh, if you are looking for a synagogue, you will try to look specifically for a, a synagogue. And because as I said, people who add the, the pictures, they will give the titles as and the information as they feel that is fit, but not necessarily the, the correct one or the one, the conventional one or the one that you would use instead. So be aware of that. And uh, if you are looking for something on, on photograph, make sure to look again in different ways. So there are lots of things you can do. You can look for images and you can study those images and uh, discuss with your students. And, uh, but mainly it, it's quite attractive for the, younger students as well. So they can discover features uh, in their own town, for example. Now, adding your own data, I'm going to start over again. And we are going to add our own data to this map for school. So to add our own data, which is this icon here, I you just click and the uh, here, there are four different uh, types of files that I can use. And the most common one is actually, I don't know why it's not here, is the one on top, is the CSV file. So a CV, CSV file, I will show you in a minute. It is this file here. You have a label, and that is the names of the places you want to add to your map, and they are postcode. Don't forget the titles you need to give is label and postcode, because if you put name here, it might not work. So always use label instead of name. 
It is very similar to a, an Excel file, but when you save it, you save as an SV file or CSV file, sorry. So, and I will show you how it works. This one is one I, I prepared earlier on. So I will choose file and in my folder here, London Touristic Attractions. So let's say you are doing a field work with your students and you want them to go and import, go and find places in London, for example, and uh, add them to, to the map. And, uh, or you can add that data to the map and then ask students to use the drawing tools to measure the distance. So it is quite confusing here because it's pink. The, you can also change the markers. So let's see the aerial view. Okay, that makes it easier. So you have here London and uh, you have all the, uh, I think I, I have here 20 different touristic attractions. So you can actually go to the drawing tools and uh, make a line between Kensington Palace and the Tower of London, for example, and see the distance. So you can plan and map a nice uh, day out with your students. They can talk about the transportation. You can also have a map of the uh, London subways. You can add here, so you can actually add different uh, data to your map all together at the same time. And uh, they will come with the same pointers, but you can always go here and uh, so click on your pointer. I don't want to change anything. And you can change the, the, the color of your pointer or even the, the icon if you prefer. And you can, as I said, uh, draw lines, make measurement, and you can actually plan your day out. It uh, can be, you can have different uh, topics and work with them. And uh, you can study for with the older students, you can start, uh, the, I have a, a set of uh, activities for waste, uh, like uh, recycling centers in around London. So you can see the distance between them. You can use for hospitals. Uh, you just need the labels and the postcode, and you can add any data to uh, the map for schools. And you can also add, and I'm going to refresh it again. You can also add uh, a bigger set of data. For example, I have here the GeoJSON. And usually they will come in a zip file like this one. And I want to know where the uh, national reserves, uh, nature reserves are in the UK. So at the moment I import. So this data I, I get extracted uh, from web, our website already with the, in the zip file. So I don't need to do anything with that. I just transfer the directly to my map. It takes a while to load because they are bigger chunk of information than just the, the label and the, the uh, postcode. But when they load, you will see, you'll be able to identify every place in UK where there are uh, nature reserves. And uh, I have one also for the uh, national parks, which you can identify, and it all depends on the topic you are working on. So you can also print your map and uh, to print your map, you are going to click on this uh, printer on the top banner, add a title to your map, uh, let's say test, and uh, you can actually have the grid lines or not. This time it's not offering, but you can get your drawings in your uh, printing as well and generate a print file. When you click on generate a print, a print file, it is going to appear on your screen and you can just um, accept and print. It will always uh, print what is appearing on your screen. So if you want a, a smaller image uh, or a bigger image, you have to adjust the image to the size you want to, to print. So that is my 
file as it's going to be printed. Okay. And I don't want that now. I'm not printing it. So going and reloading again. I'm conscious of time. And uh, now I need to go and show you the map information. So every time you move your mouse on your map, as you can see, the numbers are going crazy. You can actually uh, see the coordinates of your map. If you want to capture the coordinates, you will click on this button here. And then you can, at the moment when you click, you have the exactly co coordinate. And now I can hover around. The numbers won't change because that is the only number that matters to me. And I can, again, uh, have uh, print my map. So that is all for the coordinate. Now I want to show you the overlays. And the overlays are our last uh, activity here. So let me go back again and refresh. As you can see, I'm quite fond of the refresh button. So for the overlays, you have two types of overlays mainly. The GB overlays, and there you can, um, it's only for the Great Britain and it's not appearing. It's gray, it gets black as I zoom in, so and other stuff appear. So you can have uh, roads, place names, you can have postcodes, boundaries, and uh, the, let's see, as we zoom in more and more, then you are more ab uh, able to do, to use more of the layers. So I can use the road names, I can use the national grid. I can use the postcodes. And I can use boundaries as well. But my favorite here, principally for the smaller uh, children, is the coloring in. So for the coloring in, you have to zoom in a lot. So you will stop zooming when it becomes black now. And I don't have a town here. Let me see a place with a, uh, a busier place. Okay, here, so let's, yeah, that's a town. And uh, as I zoom in, color, I can color in. So if I click on coloring in, my map goes black and uh, I can just print this blank map, this is taking a while. Okay. I can print this blank map and ask my students to color in. So that is a good activity for when you are uh, specifying different buildings and the, the, the significance of them. And uh, again, what I, I can do is press on print and I can generate a print file and my print file is going to look like this in here. So I can give to my students and ask them to, to print. This only works for uh, the Great Britain uh, maps because it's in the GB overlay. And the as I said, there are fundamentally two types of overlay, the GB overlays and the word overlays. So the word overlays, they are fantastic for the uh, more mature students because with the word overlays, you can discuss all sorts of uh, issues. And uh, like, for example, word climate, you can do a, a, a comparison in the temperature when uh, in, between 1970s and 2000 and between 2010 and 2018. And uh, you can even put an overlay on top of the other and make one more transparent than the other. You can also uh, check the projected temperature until 2040, from 2021 to 2040. And that is quite interesting. So they can actually uh, work with predictions. You can even use this uh, for math, for example, for average predictions and so on. And uh, the same for precipitations. You can have the word human geography, 
we to show uh, word places names and populations and word places names is still grayed out don't understand why uh, population density so if you click on population density you will see for example uh, you can study with your students why some parts of the the, the world are heavily populated why others are not and sometimes in the same country in the same continent so they can uh, understand for example uh, the concentration of people along the Nile River and uh, why uh, that concentration over there in the yeah there are loads of things you can discuss with your students on the population density and uh, you can also go to the time zones and study different time zones. One thing I only learned once I started working here is that there is such a thing as three quarters of a time, time zone. And uh, so you can discuss that with your students as well. So if you go to World Physical Geography, then you can have the biomes which is a fantastic resource for uh, a resource for uh, uh, discussing where the, the, the forests are, what type of forest, what type, type of uh, vegetation, and uh, you can have mountain ranges. You can get overlay on top of overlay. I'm not doing that now because I want to show you them uh, individually. So we have uh, mountain ranges. So you can start that as well. Volcanoes, you can check with your students where volcanoes are and uh, even compare them with tectonic plates. And uh, if the tectonic plates are too strong, we can have just the boundaries as well. So yeah, I suggest you just go, go away and uh, play with the overlays. They are quite self-explanatory and the yeah, the only thing about them is what you want to do with them because it's just a click away for you to have a, a, a multitude of resources which you can explore with your students. And you can have the latitude, longitude uh, grid and the major lines if you don't want uh, too many lines so depending on the age and the stage of your student and the topic you are going about okay and uh, the last thing I want to show you is this question mark on the top banner if you click on this question mark it will take you to uh, Digimap for Schools uh, how-to guides you can go around those guides and uh, look at everything uh, that you need to know. Everything will be here and will be explained to you. And some of the, the guides are with videos as well so that you can understand better. You can also click on webinars. And uh, here you have a list of the, uh, the future webinars with the GMAP for Schools and you can sign up just by cl clicking. And you can also look at the learning resources. There are over 150 learning resources for primary, secondary, and uh, early years. And you can just go and, and play with those resources and check and see what suits you, what you would like to do, explore. So they are divided by topics. And some of them we will explore different uh, uh, drawing tools, the others overlays and so on. So they will uh, work with different areas, different tools in the GMAP for schools. So back to category, the secondary we will also have a, a similar range. So you can start climate change and uh, earthquakes, for example, emergency rescues, exploring world biomes. So there is an array of uh, activities you can do with your students with the GMAP for schools. And uh, that is us in a nutshell. I will stop sharing now. And if you have any questions, please let me know on the chat or you can even ask 
in person and I, I will answer to the best of my knowledge. And thank you very much. And uh, if you want to stay for the questions and, and please feel free. If you don't, thank you very much for attending and hope to see you soon.